very much, Sam Louise. I totally appreciate your time for joining us here. And thanks for walking everybody through these different technologies and all of the amazing potentials they have while utilizing these technologies. So it's time now for question and answer. I can see some hands up already. Uh, I'll be giving you all access. We'll start with Hopsin. Um, you can unmute now and ask your question. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, I hope we can hear it clearly. Okay. Please, I want to ask a question that as a web developer, um, is it advisable to still try to uh, compose all these stages under this power platform to work with, or just a particular one to work with under this power platform that I just explained? Okay, um, so, so many days, would you like to answer that question? Yeah, I can take that, Jefflet. So, I can say to you, it's entirely up to you, really. Why am I saying this? The reason is because I myself from a programming background, for an example, have benefited so much from the Power Platform. So for an example, I've last year, I had a personal project that I built a Power App. So at the time, Power Apps was not focused on creating user interfaces that look very nice. It was more focused on the functionality. So I took a challenge upon myself to actually make my Power App to look much more nicer and leave out the functionality part of it and add it later. So it gave me the experience to actually have a proper user interface. So I, I got the knowledge on how to make my app much more usable and have more better user experience. So again, that's on the Power App site. Also, the newest member of the Power Platform products, which is Power Pages, you are able to actually play around with some custom CSS with it so that you can be able to change how your, your Power Page looks like. So Power Pages website looks like. So as a web developer, you can actually gain more experience and more skills by using a technology that's probably not so traditional to you or not so familiar to you to actually build better user interfaces and better user experience. So I don't know if that answers your question. I hope that did hope. Yeah, thank you. OK, great. Thanks for coming up with you. Um, so next, I'll be giving it to no action name, just FNU, LNU. I don't know who exactly that is. You can unmute him. Hi, good, good afternoon. Hi, we can hear you clearly. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Okay, um, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity, and it's been a wonderful lesson. Thank you very much. Um, I'm actually a, like I have a basic idea about the power platform, and my question goes to us. I would like to know the difference between um, power portal and the new, the new, um, the new app that was um, the power page. Yeah, I want to know the difference between the power portal and the power page. That's my question. Okay, great. Um, so, Melis, over to you. Yeah, so that's a common question that people are actually asking about what uh, what's the difference between Power Apps portals and Power Pages. So, for now, what I can the the best answer that I can give you from the top of my head is that Power App uh, Power Pages are the newest member of the Power Platform family where you are able to actually sign up for free and you are able to build all the different kinds of websites and templates that you want to build from the templates that you want to build. And when it comes to Power Apps portals is that there was one limited issue. So for an example, you have your student email or you have your email that you got from the university. Now you get into the make.powerapps.com and then you want to actually create a Power Apps portal, which is something I've um, I've tried before. When I tried to do that, what happened was it didn't allow me to create a Power Apps portal. Why? The reason is because 
the only the administrator, which is the IT people within my university, had those privileges to actually create a Power Apps portal. So Power Apps portals are more on enterprise level, and it's more on focused on what businesses can actually build with Power Apps portals, whereas Power Pages is more available for everyone in its external facing. It doesn't have specific um, specific user permissions or user rights that you need to give to people so that they can interact with your app or your power page. Whereas with Power Portals, you would need to define the user permissions, you need to define the user roles within Power Portals and Dataverse so that you can give those people access to your app and they can be able to see it when you share that link. Great, right. thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hope, hope that answered your question. Yes, yes, indeed. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, so next, I will be passing it on to Oluwa Fikayomi. Um, you can unmute now. Hello, Fikayo. Can you hear me clearly? You can unmute now. Okay, so um, I'm passing it on next to Admiral Adifemi. If you can hear me clearly, you can please unmute. All right. Um. Okay, I mean. Yeah, we can. All right. Oh, thanks. Uh, so, um, um, like for I think uh, three years ago, I built like a software using Microsoft Excel <laughs> and Microsoft as assets. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. All right. So, um, I built the software. And, uh, okay. Uh, great. Yeah, I built the what's software it? and uh, what's it called? Uh, the, all, uh, all, um. Command the secondary school in Southwest Nigeria that are using the software. The software works for research, computation, like automation, uh, automation and attendance. So even to the subject and everything. So now I'm saying that is there a way I can actually um, put that use? Uh, I can put that on web using the uh, Power Platform or any of the Power Apps. Okay, so you wanted to put it on the web yes. for, Using the for everyone to access, for everyone to access or for people within that university to access? Yeah, probably, yeah. If uh, for the people in the secondary school, like the administrat uh, administrators in the university to access, another is with the permission, but now to continue building for web, can I put it on Power Platform? I use Microsoft okay. Excel and Assets to build the software. You can, okay, so you can replicate the use case of um, of the software that you built using okay. um, the Power Platform. So either you want it to be a Power App that's gathering all of that data and doing, and then Power Automate doing all of the automation in the background. You can do that. But it also depends on what really your use case extends to. So for an example, if it has like, you want it to be accessed by people who are external facing. So you can't really use a Power App to share something like that and host it on the web because Power Apps is more focused on the organization level. So it's not for commercial use but it's for organizational use. What do I mean by that? I mean, you build apps, so if we are in the same university, when we build applications using Power, Power Apps or automated solutions using Power, um, Power Automate, the solutions that we build will only be available for our university, not for the public. But if you are using Power Pages, you are able to to some extent, not entirely, to some extent, you are able to give people who are from different universities or different cities access to that data or your Power Page website. 
But at the end of the day, the whole idea around the Power Platform is more on organizational use and the productivity around how an organization uses all of the different resources that are from the Power Platform within that organization or within that university. So a great example for me is that. All right, all right I thank you. I'm clear now. Oh, sure, no problem. Okay, yeah, great. Next, I'll pass it to Sunday. Um, you can unmute now. Hey, um, thank you, Jafet. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Okay, so my question is on um, uh, on on the power uh, power platform. Currently, power platform uh, fundamental exam uh, comprised of power apps, automate, power BI, and Power Virtual Agent. Now, with the introduction of Power Pages, uh, will that will Power Pages be part of the exams also, or it's not yet part of the exams? Okay, so a quick answer to that is no, it's not yet part of the exams. Reason is because Power Pages is still in preview, so it's not really, really um, accessed by the general audience. What do I mean by that? I mean that it's not being used by a lot of companies, a lot of people to build solutions that are going to be for production. It's just being used by people to play around with it and build projects, personal projects, and see how it works and stuff because it's still in preview. But the moment it gets off preview and it's on GA status, which is general audience, then that's when probably in the next few months or next year or so, it will actually be added on the Power Platform Fundamentals. So if you do your certification now and you do the exam now or now, between now and the next three to five months, you probably won't have to worry about Power Pages. Okay, and then, sorry, a quick one also. I, I see that those uh, uh, Power Platform Associates what is the difference between the uh, Power Platform Associate and Power Platform Fundamentals? That's just the final question. Power Platform what? Power Platform, uh, uh, the Associate Certification. What is the difference between the Associate Certification and Fundamental Certification? Oh, oh, okay. So the, okay, so the, the certifications are different in terms of levels. So for an example, the Power Platform Fundamentals is PL900. And then the associate certifications are starting from PL100, PL200, PL300, PL400, and PL500. So the difference between the two is that the Power Platform Fundamentals is just the basics. So for an example, what I just did with you guys, just the basics of the Power Platform, the introduction to Power Apps and Power Automate and all of those, just a high level overview of what they're about. And then when it comes to the associate level certifications, it's more based on now your application, the in-depth knowledge of all of the different kinds of the, the, the products. So for an example, the Power Platform App Maker is more focused around Power Apps and Power Automate, if I'm not mistaken. And you have to have like in-depth knowledge around Power Apps and, and Power Automate. So that's the difference is that the associate levels one, they are more in depth, and then the power platform fundamentals one are just like, they are like high level, just the fundamentals of the exam. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Great, thanks for that. Uh, so next, I'll pass it on to Michael, and then ending it with um, Oluwa Fikayomi. I know your hand is back up. Um, Michael, you can admit some. Hello, Michael. Can you hear me clearly? If you can, it's your turn and you can unmute. Hello? Yeah. Hi, Michael. OK, um, sorry, I'm just getting I'm still trying to navigate um, through the Discord. So yeah, um, each each section uh, that you guys do, please um, drop a link where we can watch it in case 
because some of us are still new to the Discord channel and Discord server, please. That's all. Thank you. Yeah, sure, sure, we would. Um, at the end of each class, we'll drop the recording. So at the end of this class now, what we are going to do is work on this video to split the different parts so it's easier for you to watch and understand, and then we'll share the recording with you all as soon as we can. So be expecting Hello? that link in Hello? the Discord, sir. Hello? Yeah. Um, okay. Is this stuff for strictly for students? Yes, so the curriculum is designed for students. All of the re um, resources we shared last week are also designed for students. So generally the program is. Uh, no way someone can, there's no student can just practice with, go along with you guys. So there are separate curriculums and activities for those who are not students. And um, what you could do is reach out to any of us in the Discord server. Yes, uh, I think we lost him. So what he was saying is you can reach out to any of us on the Discord um, channels and we can um, see what we can share with you so that you can be able to follow, follow along with what we're doing. Uh, thank you. No problem. So I see there's a question on Oluwafi Gaiomi. On, on the chat. So do you need Power Apps as a data analyst and what for? Depends, um, to answer your question, it depends on your requirements and your needs. What am, I, what am I trying to say around that? Is that if, for an example, um, the question you ask, if I was a civil engineer, would I need Power Apps and what for? So for an example, it depends on what you are trying to do. So if you are a data analyst and you want to use Power Apps, you can build, for an example, an application that just, in a sense, visualizes a small or a subset of your data on your screen. So there's different things that you can do with Power Apps, or you can just use Power BI to just visualize all of that data. And also, the question on could you use Power Pages to build a portfolio, that means you mean your personal profile portfolio where you are sharing all of your work experiences? The answer is not necessarily or no. The reason is because the Power Pages, the reason why we use Power Pages, we use Power Pages to build websites that actually extend productivity around teams. So for an example, if you are doing a website solution for a specific company to go through a specific onboarding process and you want that onboarding process to be seamless, you can use Power Pages so that, um, so that those employees can go to that website, that company website, use it for their onboarding processes and, and so forth. You can't use Power Pages for, for an example, social media um, websites or social media sites. You can't use Power pages to build a portfolio because it's not really for productivity, but it's more on your personal experience, your personal gain, whereas it's more on, whereas Power Pages is more on the productivity of a team and the productivity of a company. Great. Um, thanks for responding to that question, Sumilis. Uh, I guess both questions have been answered. So, Thanks again, everybody, for joining this call. If there are any further questions, I would say share them in the Discord server. Because of time, we will not be able to go on with the questions.